Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers. This is part 28. All about water pumps and steam engine oiling devices. These are edited extracts from my series Model Engineering for Beginners, which is a series that I really do recommend that you watch. Model Engineering for Beginners is not just on Patreon, it's public on YouTube, so you can watch all of the episodes and there's a lot of information contained within. This edited version is about water pumps and oil pumps. In reality, most feed pumps on model steam engines, and a lot of them on the full size, work in the same way. They are simple lift pumps. This one is a crankshaft driven pump, and it's driven off the crankshaft of a large steam engine, well a large model steam engine. Alternatively, the ram of the pump could be directly coupled to a steam cylinder, like in a weir type pump. So how do these pumps work? All it is is a piston, as you can see here, moving in and out, and a couple of valves that are located in the valve chest on the side of the cylinder. The water comes in at the bottom and goes out at the top. In order to have a closer look at the valve arrangement, I'm dismantling the pump. This fancy thing at the top is not just a cap that fits over the valve chest. This is an air reservoir, and its function is to stop the water from knocking. Once a column of water starts to move, it will physically move the pipes and if you pump it round a pipe circuit, it makes a noise, like in the plumbing of an old house. The air chamber just acts as a damper, because air is compressible and water isn't. Modern central heating systems still use an air chamber to stop this knocking. In most small lift pumps, there are a pair of stainless steel ball valves. There's one at the bottom and one at the top and the function of the bottom valve is to admit water but not let the water return down the feed pipe and the function of the top ball is to let water out to the boiler but not to allow the water to be pulled back into the cylinder by the piston. This particular boiler feed pump is a Stuart 5A pump and it has a slightly different valve in the top. It's like a poppet valve, almost like a car valve on a cylinder. And you can see from this demonstration I have the bottom part in some water and as I move the piston back and forth you will see that it pumps water out of the top. So I'm sure you will now look at lift pumps in a different way. When you see them working like this and see the little squirt coming from the pipe, every time the piston moves back and forth in the cylinder it's pulling in from the bottom and pushing out at the top. Clever isn't it? The travel of the valves is generally limited on lift pumps so they return to where they're supposed to be quickly. And if I put my fingers over the end of this pipe and squeeze it as hard as I can, I cannot stop the water coming out. So they're a very primitive pump, but they're very, very efficient, and there's not much to go wrong. These lubricators work in a very simple way. There's a central ratchet and two poles, one on the arm and one on the body of the lubricator. And with this arrangement, the shaft can only rotate in one direction, which is what we need it to do. And with the arm removed and turned round, you can see the pole on the arm itself. This lubricator is called a ratchet type lubricator for obvious reasons. It has a ratchet. And this ratchet shaft is very loose, which is one of the reasons I think it doesn't work properly. This is a very common type of mechanical lubricator, but there are other types. There are lubricators with very similar internal mechanics to this one, but using a one-way clutch instead of a ratchet. There are also some types which use an eccentric on the shaft that depresses a spring-loaded pump piston. You can clearly see from the current clip on screen that this uses an oscillating cylinder as a pump, pretty much like on a toy steam engine. And I think it would be possible to make this run as a steam engine by fitting a flywheel in place of the ratchet and then feeding some compressed air or steam into the outlet. But I want it to be a pump, and it's not been a very good pump up to this time. This video is not going to show me putting it back together, I'm just showing the principle of operation. As I move all the pieces out of the way, you can now see the little oscillating cylinder. Quite a nice piece of model engineering really, a model in its own right. As I temporarily put this back together, you can clearly see the mechanical function. The main shaft is threaded into the crank web. If you put it in reverse, it will unscrew itself. But you can clearly see the little piston going up and down in the cylinder. The one flaw with this design is that the oil flow is non-adjustable, unless you put some sort of a bypass valve in, which is very fiddly. 
The spring-loaded piston type are usually internally adjustable for oil flow, but with this type you have to limit the travel of the arm. These kind of pumps are generally driven off a valve rod and sometimes with a reduction linkage. The general rule is, for each revolution of the crankshaft, the ratchet needs to be clicked over just by one notch. Any more than that and the lubricator will over-oil the cylinder. And as I remove the nut and the washer and the spring, here is the oscillating cylinder. So here's how it works. As the piston goes up and down in the cylinder, this small hole in the cylinder body passes across the ports. First of all it sucks oil in through this slot. Then in the part of the cycle where the cylinder oscillates, it pumps the oil out of this hole into the spring-loaded clack valve, which in turn pumps it to the cylinder. I'm going to put the pump back together now before I lose any of the parts. The complexity of mechanical lubricators often put people off, but they really are technically better than a displacement lubricator shown here. On the plus side, a displacement lubricator is a fit and forget device. And once you get used to how far to turn the little wheel to regulate the oil supply, they can be very reliable. But on the downside, you never really know how much oil you've got left in the lubricator. Mechanical lubricators are fine, if they're working okay. If you're using a ratchet type mechanical lubricator, I would always recommend taking the time to make sure there's not too much arm travel. It's not a massive problem if you overall your engine, but it is if you sat behind a steam locomotive getting a face full of oil, not to mention the cost of the extra oil. If you would like to know more about mechanical lubricators, please watch the full series. Don't forget, these are just edited extracts. Stay safe, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.